Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we'll also live with Him. That example of the death and burial of baptism is that symbol to realize that we have given over our lives to Him. We've asked Jesus to come in to be Lord of our life, to be not only Lord, but Savior of our life. And because of that, we have this opportunity now to, to live for Him every day, to let the love of Christ come through us and out of us and into a world around us that needs some good news. Amen? Now, the Sunday Sermon with Lee Farmer, pastor of Cone Baptist Church, Heathsville, Virginia. So, has anybody in this room ever been accused of eavesdropping? Really? Seriously? Nobody? You're not going to raise your hand? You're not going to confess? You've never overheard a conversation and all of a sudden you get a little closer because you want to hear exactly what they're going to say? We get to do that today with Paul as he's being asked a question and he's going to respond to it. And that question deals with what it means for us to deal with our daily struggle with sin. How do we navigate these waters of living a life, of knowing that we are a sinful person by nature? That we live in a sinful world. And yet we're being called to a life of righteousness and we're being called to a life of, of doing the best that we can every day to live for Christ. It's a daily struggle. But we know that through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, we have already overcome that struggle. Being dead to sin means for us today that we are alive in Christ. Romans 6, beginning in verse 1, please. Let's read together. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? So here's what's happening. A person is questioning the Apostle Paul. Okay, you talk about this grace. Well, let me ask you a question. If God's grace is so good, should we just not go ahead and sin more so that we get to experience more of God's grace? So you can see the ridiculousness of the question already. So the Apostle Paul's response is, should we? Should we just go ahead and continue to sin so God's grace will increase more and more? We know the answer to that. That would be an absolute abuse of God's grace, wouldn't it? We know that. And that's why he follows up in verse 2, by no means. For we have died to sin and can no longer live in it. We don't just sin so that we can see God's grace increase in our life, but we are thankful that it does. Amen? We are thankful that God's grace and His mercy is sufficient in our life. And we know that God's grace is all sufficient and can cover the cost of our sins. Verse 3. Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into His death? Now he's going to talk a little bit now about the, the ordinance of baptism. And he's talking here about what it means for that outward expression of faith. What it means for us is, you know, in the Baptist tradition, we do what's called believer's baptism. You understand that if, you, if you're around our church very often. That's where a person comes to know Christ first. It's that personal accountability. And then once they've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, then that's when they experience baptism in our church. Churches do it differently. We're not criticizing anybody. But we're doing this to explain how that's done in the Baptist church. You believe first, and then you're baptized. Because that baptism is an incredible picture of an inward change in your life. You know what, that we talk about that, that death and that burial and that resurrection of Jesus Christ is what that experience is like when you go through the baptismal waters. It's not those baptismal waters that save you. It's that personal relationship with Jesus Christ that saves you. But you're declaring through baptism that you are a child of God. We know we are not sinless. The Apostle Paul says we all fall short of the glory of God every single day. Day, But we are reminded in these scriptures that when we are baptized into Christ, we have made a profession of faith. We have confessed Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And so now we're sort of called to an accountability. We know that the price for our sins has been paid. We know that Jesus' death on the cross covers our sins. But we also know that we're not to take advantage of that. We're to be thankful for it. Thankful for the blessings of God's mercy. Thankful for His forgiveness whenever we repent of our sins and know that He removes our sins as far as the east is from the west. But not to abuse it. Verse 4, We were therefore buried with Him through the baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may have new life. 
In that moment when you said yes, when you opened your heart to Jesus Christ, when you asked the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit to come and dwell within you, you became a new creation in Christ. You're new. The old things have passed away. Now some of the struggles of daily life are going to be there. When Monday rolls around, it's still going to be Monday. And you're going to have the opportunity to deal with some of the same struggles you maybe have dealt with next week. But here's the good news. In your relationship with Jesus Christ, when you have sure that your faith and trust is in Him, He is going to equip you to face those challenges that are before you. And he talks about in verse 4 that just through baptism... We understand that we are put into death in order that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. Baptism is that beautiful visual symbol of a person who's put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Baptism is that modern day bumper sticker, if you will, that says, I have identified with Jesus Christ and I've accepted what he did for me through his death, his burial and his resurrection. We are made new and those old things have passed away. Sin stays in the grave so that we can live in Christ Jesus. If your faith and trust is in Jesus, that cost of those sins has been paid. Verse verse 5, For if we have been united with Him in death like this, we will certainly also be united with Him in resurrection like this. Being baptized is like an image of what Christ did for us. It's that picture of what Christ did for us. And if you want to know how much God loves you specifically... If you want to know how much Jesus loves you specifically, I want you to stop for a moment and realize that Jesus didn't have to go to the cross, but He willingly went to the cross. Do you understand that? He willingly went to the cross because it was God's plan. He willingly went to that cross to pay that price for you and for me so that the cost of our sins would be covered. Because folks, there is no way that you and I could have worked out our salvation. There is no way that we could have paid that price. But Jesus did. He paid the price by giving of His life so that you and I have the opportunity to live for Him. Verse 5, For if we have been united with Him in death like this, we certainly will also be united with Him in resurrection like this. And go on to verse 6, For we know that our old self was crucified with Him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Here's the thing. When you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, the weight of sin is released from you. You are no longer chained and bound by sin. And sin is that which breaks God's hearts. That's those things that we know when we read the Bible, the things where He tells us not to do these things. That these things are an affront to God and that we're to, to follow Him and to do the best that we can and not sin. But sometimes we will. Sometimes we're going to make mistakes. Sometimes we're going to do things or say things that we shouldn't. And it's a sin. But God loves us so much that in that moment that we ask for forgiveness, it's done. Because of the incredible price that Jesus paid on that cross. Now some of you in this room or some of you maybe watching online, maybe you don't struggle with sin every day. But I do. I do. And I remember one time we were laughing the other night because we were driving through Richmond and, you know, traffic in Richmond can be a bit challenging at times. And Kim and I both remembered a moment in our life way back when when we were coming through an intersection in a car and someone ran a red light and I T-boned them. I hit them hard. And out of my mouth came words that should not have come out of my mouth. And I didn't think much about it until the two-year-old in the back seat repeated every word I said. We don't realize sometimes how our actions affect others. But to know that we are forgiven because of what God's done for us. And to know that you and I have the opportunity to live for Him every day. In our early morning study this morning, we talked about, I asked a question, and the, the leader of the study asked the question, are you a cul-de-sac in your faith or are you a conduit in your faith? Think about that for a minute. When the good news comes into you, where does it go? Does it stay bottled up in that cul-de-sac? Or does it pass through you onto someone else? 
If your faith and trust is in Jesus Christ, you have the opportunity to be that conduit, to be that individual that allows that work of Christ to not only come into you but pass through you to go on and to be a blessing for someone else because you have that relationship with Jesus Christ. Verse 6 says, Our old self was crucified. We no longer, no longer are slaves to sin. Thank you, Lord, for the weight of sin has been destroyed. And Jesus paid that price. Verse 7 goes, continues on, Because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. What that means for you and I today is you have been made right. You have been justified in the eyes of God by what Jesus Christ did for you and for me. You've been made right. What an exciting thing it is to think about that. Verse 8, now if we died with Christ, we believe that we'll also live with Him. That example of the death and burial of baptism is that symbol to realize that we have given over our lives to Him. We've asked Jesus to come in to be Lord of our life, to be not only Lord but Savior of our life. And because of that, we have this opportunity now to, to live for Him every day, to let the love of Christ come through us and out of us and into a world around us that needs some good news. Amen? It's tough out there. It's a difficult time in our nation right now. All the stuff, the political stuff that's going on, and where do we fall and how do we fall, it's a tough time in our denomination right now. We had a, a difficult week in our conference this past week, in our national convention. A lot of folks were hurt by some things that were said and done. But here's the thing I understand. God still loves us. And He is still on His throne. And God still wants to be a part of our life every day. And that He has included us in His plan out of His love for us. We need to take that love and share it with others. Verse 10 says, The death that He died, He died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. I'm so excited to think about that in terms of that Jesus didn't have to go to the cross every time I sin. That his gift was so awesome and so beyond our measures, a way if we can measure anything, that his gift paid the price for all of our sins forever. If we will just simply believe and confess those sins to him. The wages of sin, the cost of sin has been satisfied by what Jesus Christ did on the cross. The penalty of those sins, separation from God, eternal hell, has been paid for by Jesus Christ. The way we receive that free gift is to open our hearts and say, Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins. Verses 11 says, in the same way, count yourselves dead to sin but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Sin separates us from God for all of eternity. But Jesus paid the price. Jesus built the bridge. If your faith and trust is in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, you understand that He willingly gave it all for you and for me. And that now you and I have the opportunity to live for Him. How are we doing that this week? How are we going to go out this week and let the light of Christ shine in us to someone else? How are we going to let the compassion and mercy that's been given to us through Jesus Christ exude through our life into the lives of those people around us this week? If you're sensitive at all, then you realize that every single day that God gives you, unless you stay home and don't go around any people, if you're ever around any people, there's going to be somebody that's going to cross your path that needs some compassion, that needs some mercy, that needs some good news. And if you love Jesus, you have that good news. And we have the opportunity to live out that example. Count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. We've been redeemed. The cost has been paid. There's an old story that goes on about St. Augustine. Some of you may remember him from some of your religious readings in the past. But there's a story about St. Augustine that said he was, this is before he came to Christ. He's walking down the streets in one of these cities. And as he's walking down the street, he sees someone he recognizes. And it's a woman that he once had an affair with. 
And so he immediately sees her and he turns around and he goes the other way and she recognizes him and she begins to call him by name and she begins to say, hey, it's me, it's me. And as he's walking away, he looks over his shoulder and he says, I know, but it's not me. Because he found Jesus and he was made new. He had the opportunity to start over with a fresh new life in his relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the kind of power you and I get to celebrate today. Old things are made new. We are new creatures in Christ through our relationship with Jesus. So my question is, is the weight of sin bearing down on you today? Is it pressing you down? Or do you understand that through Jesus Christ, you can find forgiveness of those sins? That the weight of those sins, the burden of those sins can be removed from your life that you no longer have to carry them. Now, just in that story about St. Augustine, we understand that the temptation of sin was still there, even though his life had changed. For you and I today, even in our new creature, even being a new creation in Christ, we're going to face temptation every single day. But he gives us the opportunity to turn from that sin. And when we call upon the name of the Lord, he gives us the power to overcome that sin. And I pray today that you truly understand that you have the opportunity to be thankful today. He died so you could live. He gave His life and paid the price for our sins so that we have the gift of eternal life. Whether it's on this earth or in the presence of God, if you love Jesus, you have the opportunity to live for Him. Paul was trying to address this situation And remind them to not abuse their relationship with Christ. They're saying, hey, you know, you're saying we can be forgiven of any sin, so let's just go out here and let's just sin a whole bunch and not worry about it, because the more we sin, the more God's grace will be upon us. In theory, that's true. But is that not an abuse of a relationship? God loves you. God sent His only Son to pay the price for you and for me. And what He wants us is to live. To live out of the abundance that He has blessed us with. And to share that with others. I want to challenge you this week to do just that. To live out of abundance. To realize what God has blessed you with. And how can you use your blessings now to encourage somebody else? You've been given the opportunity. You've been given the challenge through the reading of His Word this morning. You as a believer in Jesus Christ are now dead to sin. It no longer has power over you because Jesus has forgiven you of that sin. You have some good news. Let's get out of here this week and share that with some people around us. Because there are people around us every day that need to know that God loves them. So often you'll hear somebody say, you know, you tell me God loves me, but God does, you don't know what I've done in my past. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. He still loves you. And if you will just say yes to Christ, all can be forgiven. Would you bow your heads for just a moment? As you simply think about your journey this morning of faith, I hope you realize what a tremendous opportunity you and I have this morning to live for Jesus. He did the heavy work. He paid the ultimate price. And we praise God every day that He didn't stay in that tomb. We praise God every day that He rose again, giving us that promise of our own resurrection someday. But until the Lord calls us home or until He returns, we have work to do, church. We have the opportunity to live for Him. How has God blessed you this week? Or how has God blessed you this past week? And how are you now going to use those blessings to bless someone else? Oh, dear Lord, we are so very thankful today that we have the opportunity to come into Your presence to worship and to praise You And to know that when we approach your throne with a repentant heart to just say, Lord, please forgive me of my sins. That it happens just like that. 
That's how much you love us. And you have called us to a life where we get to live for you, to go out and to share out of our abundance and out of our blessings, to share the grace and mercy and forgiveness that's come our way with a world that needs to hear it. So Lord, encourage us now this morning to do just that. We leave this place to take what you've given us and blessed us with through grace, love, mercy, forgiveness, and help us to share it with those around us this week. Help us to live for you. Lord, this morning, if someone needs to open their heart to you because they've never accepted you and they want forgiveness of sin, they want this gift of eternal life, I pray today, God, that they will simply just say, Lord, please come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Help me to live for you. The Apostle Paul says, for all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And for those of us who may have been on the spiritual journey for a while, Lord, we do get distracted. We miss the turn. We miss the mark from time to time. But you allow us a time of renewal. So, Lord, renew in us. Bring us that spirit of revival in us. That we truly will get excited again about the opportunity we have to live for you. Thank you for this time, Lord. Now bless us in this time of invitation. We give it all to you in Jesus' name. Amen. You've just heard the Sunday Sermon with Lee Farmer, pastor of Cone Baptist Church, Heathsville, Virginia, online at conebaptist.com. That's C-O-A-N-Baptist.com.